Today we're ranking ideological pills. What is an ideological pill? Well, it's basically just like a convenient way to sum up your beliefs and kind of signal to other people what you believe There's in. There's an important distinction to be made that's kind of hidden within the language. Being red-pilled, for example, is different than just being conservative. Being conservative just means you favor more conservative ideas. On a spectrum of conservatism and liberalism, being red-pilled kind of signals that you used to believe in something else, but now you believe in something different, and you've uncovered truths about the world that make it impossible to go back to your old viewpoint. Like taking a pill, you can't untake the pill. Once you take the pill, it's over. Once you've taken the red pill, blue pill is like fantasy basically. Blue pill is naive fantasy. It's not real. It's not true. I chose a tier list over an iceberg chart or something like that because iceberg charts are a little anticlimactic. What metrics am I using to decide whether a pill is good or bad? Um, two main things. One is novelty. The, the weirder and more niche it is, the better. There also has to be a large community behind it. And there's two main umbrellas the pills fall under. One, your political belief structure. Two, relates to your beliefs around romantic relationships and sexual relationships, mostly in like the men's rights, activist, uh, incel. I don't wanna lump all those things together because they're different, but now that we got that all out of the way, Let's get into it. Cause if you ate somebody else's medicine, some bad food, or some poison, you could get very sick. I think the first pill we're gonna go with is the uh, the red pill, just the political red pill. But yeah, it's just it's like a general view in conservatism, and also like like I mentioned in the intro, distinctly believing that like liberal ideas are very naive and very uh, very utopian, very romantic, kind of rose-colored glasses, and it's in, it's in fact fantasy. I, I think, for example, where a blue pillar might believe that all humans are equal, a red pillar believes that no, there's hierarchies, there's there's humans aren't equal. Some people are better than others inherently. A red pillar would say that globalization and mass immigration will never work because cultures are too different. Where a blue pillar might say like, oh no, we can all just get along, and the differences in people are beautiful. You know, I mean, I I, I imagine there's probably like millions of people who'd say, oh, I'm red pilled. So community, good. I kind of like the notion of like leaving behind the old for the new, you know? At this point, it's not just conservatism, it's like being red-pilled is like being woke, right? Red pill. Red pill? Mmm. Red pill's like an A- like, this is where it all starts. I'm gonna go A-tier on red pill, honestly. Red pill is an A-tier ideology. After red pill. It only makes sense to do blue pill, because blue pill, I kind of explained, blue pill is- Better explained as the opposite of red pill. Blue pill is fan- like, you live in a fantasy world. You live in a fucking, uh, you live in La La Land. Hippy dippy fucking hoo-ha. That's all the blue pill is. It's kind of hard to describe, because it's like, liberal democrats are blue pilled, and liberals are blue pilled. Like, that's not Blue true. pill is just like, I think, I think blue pill is just like, any naive belief about the any, world. Any, any sort of like, really romantic Hollywood view of the world is blue pill. Yeah, blue pill sucks. Blue pill is D tier. D tier ideology. Now we can go red pill, manosphere, yes, okay. Our second red pill, the red pill in terms of relationships. Basically take the principle of like the political red pill and apply it to relationships. So it's like- If the blue pill with relationships is believing in love at first sight and, and this really romantic Hollywood idea of love and sexual relationships and being like, oh, you know, there's I have a soulmate and there's only one person for me. The red pill is being like, no, there's a big, variation here because the red pill can just be like no we're we're animals and we're meant to reproduce and okay all this love like hokey romantic hollywood bullshit is just like a some like is just shit that's been fed to us our whole lives in fucking romantic comedies it doesn't actually exist there is no soulmate there is no one i can just love anybody if i want to M monogamy is a lie things like that those are all like red pill relationship ideas it also goes farther like that's a broad spectrum red pill also relates to how men are attractive and what makes a man attractive so where the blue pill believes that oh all that matters is personality you know if you're a good person and you're kind women will like you and you'll find a good partner and that's all that matters the red pill is like no you can't just be yourself you gotta have like something to offer you need social status you need money you need an attractive body you need like good game you can't just be nice you need to be like flirtatious and mysterious and kind of have these like character traits of like a sexy man and then that goes farther as well into like red pillars believing that men 
men should always be the dominant in a relationship and that women kind of should exist in the man's world. But I'm gonna put this one a bit lower. I'm gonna put this one B tier below the political red pill because uh, it's kind of the same thing. I don't know. I guess they're kind of the same thing, but it's just a bit weirder. And it's like goes to a worse place. Like this one, this one specifically goes to some weird, uh, some weird sexist places I don't like. All right, and behind that we have the the opposite of the relationship red pill, which is the relationship blue pill. I would say it's just the opposite of the relationship red pill. You know, I explained it before. This one I specifically hate more than the political blue pill. It's like Holly. It's like it's literally been fed to you by movies. Like the whole concept of like a soulmate and like all and just being yourself. I don't know. I just cannot subscribe to that shit at all. It's like there's a it's a bit of a harsher world than that. I think people who believe in this shit just get cheated on, honestly. Don't be too nice. Believing in this ideology is nothing but a detriment to you. Brings us to the relationship purple pill, which as you can imagine is a combination of the both. Very exciting stuff so far. You should be a nice person and be authentic. Like don't go be a pickup artist because pickup artists are suicidal soulmates don't exist and this hollywood fucking love at first sight romantic be yourself shit doesn't exist but that doesn't mean that i have to go out and be like some fuckboy douchebag who just uh breaks women's hearts 24 7 i can still be nice that's the purple pill as far as i know it's really hard to find definitions of these it's more just people talking in, in fucking forms purple pill that's a good ideology i a purple pill i think i think purple pill is like that's a good i gotta go like a tier with purple pill man i a tier is that's like i'm like that's the one i most subscribe to so far as a personal philosophy purple pill all right next up we have political black pill the political black pill this one's super boring it sounds like it'd be exciting because it's like, you know, red or blue pill, red pill, black pill. It's like the terminal political philosophy of the political pills. Not exciting. It's just political nihilism. Uh, it's just like, oh, well, nothing matters. Nothing I do matters. Uh, it's like an absence of belief, basically. It's an absence of belief with a fucking, with a taste of depression. There's just like normal nihilism. Um, I imagine more and more people subscribe to this one nowadays. Shit feels pretty hopeless sometimes, but uh, I think the benefit of the black pill the political black pill. It's a stepping stone into a lot of different things. You know, obviously political black pillars are the kind of people that commit terrorist acts, but it's also a stepping stone into, I mean like nihilism in general is a stepping stone into something more beautiful. If you can kind of bloom out of nihilism, you can be like, well, nothing means anything. So why would I be sad? Why would I fucking mope around all day? Why wouldn't I just do something to change my reality now? And you kind of forge your own meaning within nihilism. Very neutral uh, ideology. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in C tier. Not that exciting. Now, this brings us to the relationship black pill. Now, this is just, this is incels. This is what incels believe in. The, uh, the boardwalk van attack and the fucking Toronto van attack and the, ta and the, and the incel terrorist attacks, they're all black pillars. What is the black pill? Well, the black pill is the terminal philosophy of the blue pill and the red pill in the manosphere. The red pill uh, women are subservient to men and men need to be strong and make money and have something to offer and you can't just be yourself The black pill states that if you don't have what women want you never will and that's basically height and facial attractiveness And that's all that matters. Let's say you're 5'5 five five and you're average looking, but you're like fucking uh, Mother Teresa heart of gold like multi-millionaire like the most virtuous man to ever exist According to the black pill, you will get cheated on and left for someone taller and more attractive, regardless of their social status or regardless of what they've done, because all that matters is height and facial structure. So it's very nihilistic, but where it differs from the political black pill is that you can't forge a path out of it. It doesn't like make way for a new sense of meaning. It's like, well, if you don't have it, then you don't have it. You never will. You might as well just give up on relationships. Um, I don't want to go like shouting out uh, like YouTube channels and stuff, but you know doing research on like the black pill these just like see this some of the shit these people say is uh is dark as fuck Like these are some really sad people. They take it really extreme Like there's a lot they love charts They make a lot of charts and they make a lot of line graphs and a lot of comparisons And I think they take it too extreme Like I know like one of the black pill ideas is that if you're if you're shorter than six feet You can't you're not gonna get anything if you're shorter than six feet It's like you might get a relationship, but she'll just cheat on you if you're less attractive than like an eight out of ten Same thing. It's like you're gonna you're just gonna get cheated on if you do get a relationship in the first place. So like, it's really extreme, but I, I guess I could see, imagine being like, 
five two micro penis ugly as sin like what do you do like what, what <laughs> actually though right of course you'd believe in and of course you'd of course you'd be a black pillar why wouldn't you be right i don't know maybe those are the kind of people that are propagating this idea and then more people are subscribing to it and also like all the incel stuff it's like it's like video game lore people get really into it people get really into like they always start bringing up like evolutionary biology lots of subscribers of the black pill and it's a pretty like fucking as far as like just an extreme ideology goes it's not that novel actually it's not that novel it's a pretty simple concept it's like it's more just kind of like escapism in a way so it's not novel it's like it's like it's kind of like dumb dumb most nihilism is dumb dumb stuff baby's first philosophy is like nothing means anything you know ct i'll put with the other black pill very neutral actually it's really extreme this one has kind of like got the most potential for danger in the world. This one probably like people who believe in this commit the most crime. People who believe in this cause the most problems. As an it's like a stronger concept, so it, it therefore beats out the political black pill. All right, up next, following black pill, we have the pink pill. Not much to say about this one, other than that it's a tier. It's like it's the black pill. Take all the black pill, but you're a woman. It's like take the black pill, take the incel, take the whole that whole community but you're a woman and it's only women who talk about this and they're called fem cells and they i don't know how they manage this but they can't get laid and uh they basically say everything that men say about women but about men it's really interesting this community exists i like but definitely more novel i mean you wouldn't expect women to believe in that like any great ideology started out as a subreddit that got banned and then became a website that's i love that arc a tier easy a tier easy Okay, green pill. This one's pretty novel because it's like relates to ecofascism, which is a new idea because people haven't really cared so much about the environment until like the last 20 years. But ecofascism, brand new idea, um, all about fucking you have to protect the environment at all costs through any means necessary. The environment must be protected, not in a nice hippie way, like 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 killing people like people must die for the environment to be protected. That's ecofascism. And it's a far right idea because a lot of the people who say ecofascism or even talk about ecofascism always talk about like, oh, we need to stop immigration and we need to like fucking bomb uh, India and China so they stop polluting and like stop the mass growth of population and immigration. They always take it to like some racist place. Like it's not the US's fault, like it's everywhere else. The third world is causing all the problems with the environment. Um, I know the, uh, the New Zealand shooter famously was an eco-fascist, although that's up for debate because he kind of just said anything because he was an accelerationist. The other thing too, eco-fascism is like an accelerationist idea in the sense that eco-fascism may or may not actually exist. It's more of just like a thought virus to put out there. So you taking the green pill is the realization that the environment is the only thing that matters and that you need to protect the environment and blah, 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 blah. Again, like eco-fascism, I kind of believe that the green pill was just made up to confuse people. Who knows? I don't fucking know. Uh, I can't really, I did, I did a lot of research. The way I was researching this video is I would like find the pill. I would find like a definition of a pill. And then I would research like Quora is a big one. If people are asking about it on Quora, then you go to Reddit. If people are talking about it on Reddit and then you go to like 4chan and if people are bringing it up in like casual conversation on 4chan, then it's real. If someone's like, oh, but I'm green pilled, you know, and like green pill, you know, like just talking about it in general, and then it's a real thing. People actually, it's, it's real enough that you can casually mention it and people reading it will understand what you mean. This one couldn't really find that. I don't really think it's real. Ecofascism, kind of a wacky idea. Uh, also, but just made up. I mean, but see, I could take you, you can like, it's so cool. It's. I could say ecofascism is wacky, but it's made up. But then the idea that it's made up is wacky. Like the the accelerationist like fabrication of an ideology for the sake of confusing people, regardless of what the ideology is, is like a super wacky like contemporary thing. That's really novel. Like let's make up a whole concept just to confuse people. Uh, that's pretty novel. But no one really believes in this. This isn't real. D tier. D tier for the green pill. The bread pill. I see, this is one that I was so sure that it wasn't real, but this one's real. Um, and this is our first left-wing pill. Actually, I think it's our only left-wing pill on this list. It's uh, basically just like taking the fucking ANCOM pill and subscribing to anarcho-communism. 
as the only path forward in reality. It refers to a book, like a like kind of seminal ANCOM text from the 19th century called The uh, the Conquest of Bread. Okay, the Anti-Defamation League. I'm not going to fucking go into the Anti-Defamation League and why I think the Anti-Defamation League is an issue. But they talk about the bread pill as a far right thing and being like, the bread pill is like the body of Christ. It's like some sort of like Christian pill wordplay on red pill but it's like you're christian uh that's not real that's not real no there is no right-wing circle that talks about the bread pill as like some sort of christian dogma thing it's only a left-wing meme and it's a left-wing meme as a retaliation to the right-wing meme of the red pill the adl you can literally you can literally just make shit up i like it because it's far left they took that they made it their own thing it relates to some niche literature i love gatekeeping I love that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go fucking B tier on the bread pill. B for bread. This brings me to, I'm gonna do this one right away. This is my favorite pill. This is my f my absolutely favorite pill. It's gonna take a bit of a definition here. The clear pill. <sighs> it's a lot to sum up in a video, and especially like, it deserves its own video. It comes from a guy named uh, Curtis Yarevin, better known as uh, Manacious Moldbug, who is part of the, he's kind of like a cornerstone, neo-reactionary movement, the dark enlightenment, kind of like with Nick Land accelerationist. I think as far as I know, he's stepped back a bit from those ideas and now he's a bit more moderate. I think I think his thing is that he thinks democracy is like a failed project and that democracy doesn't work. He's not as right wing. Like if I say right wing, he's not as right wing as you think he is, but he's still right wing. He's weird internet right wing. Not like alt right either. He's just like sketchy. His like entire philosophy is a dog whistle. Look, I'm not going to endorse somebody part of the fucking neo reactionary movement because uh, that's a dumb dumb that's a dumb dumb movement. He proposes the idea of the clear pill in the face of political confusion and nihilism as, as a kind of way to orient yourself in a post-truth world, which I really like because the clear pill is like a solution to a problem. And I love solutions to problems. Basically, all political beliefs are constructs. Like, if you're conservative or if you're liberal, it's the lens you filter things through. Biased, right? Like, you have a cognitive bias. If you say you're liberal and then you view the world through a liberal lens, you have a cognitive bias, whether it's good or bad. I'd say all cognitive biases are bad, but they're also necessary for getting things done because you need a framework to operate in. You can't just do things all willy-nilly unless you believe in the clear pill, unless you take the clear pill. You look at the whole world with complete neutrality. And instead of trying to validate an idea or a concept through your political belief by finding holes in it, you look at it neutrally. You look at it neutrally and then try to imagine a world where that idea is real rather than trying to dismantle it. And so the example, that's kind of complicated. The example, the CIA did 9-11. Look at that neutrally. Instead of looking at that with a very skeptic lens and trying to poke holes in it, because that requires a belief structure to do so. You have to believe in something and to dismantle an idea, you have to believe in something. So believe in nothing and look at that idea neutrally. Now assume it's true and try to find evidence of that idea's truth in the world. Work backwards. If you find examples of truth regarding that idea or that concept, then you can safely assume that that idea is true. The CIA did 9-11. Well, personally, and I think, well, it's been 20 years since 9-11, and for everybody involved to have kept their mouths shut the entire time, to the point where we still don't know if the CIA did 9-11, is kind of uh, baffling to believe that to be true. For one party involved in that conspiracy to not fucking leak it, I don't believe that could happen. So, therefore, I don't think the CIA did 9-11. I don't like ideology in general. I really hate frameworks and axioms. Don't get me fucking started on axioms. I fucking hate axioms. I like to pretend I'm smart, but I'm actually just completely baffled by the simplest concepts. That's the clear pill. I'm a clear pillar. Uh, there's much longer essays you can find that describe this more in detail. Curtis Yarvin's kind of hard to follow sometimes. Very novel, very exciting, very new. Uh, I think there's a potential. I think I'm gonna go S tier on this one. I'm gonna go S tier. And Curtis Yarvin's pretty uh, pretty known on the internet. I'm, I would assume there's a lot of people who say they're clear pillars. Probably our only S tier. Because up next, we have the Iron Pill. This one's stupid. The, the, this one's not stupid. It's real. It's just like a dumb idea. It's like some Boogaloo Boy shit of just like all the far right guys. The far right guys, they're like, oh, we need to get jacked for the race war. And we need to pump iron for the race war. It's called the Iron Pill for pumping iron, lifting fucking weights. Like I found actual posts of people saying this, which is so frustrating because it's so stupid. Uh, I really think it's just 16 year olds. Uh, it's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. It's a stupid knucklehead idea. We're gonna go D tier. All right, following the theme of Nazis, I guess this one the siege pill is fucking stupid. There's an online form called the uh, 
Adam Waffen division, just a Nazi form. They worship Charles Manson, Helder Skelter, and this kind of idea of like sparking a, uh, a race war, sparking some sort of siege. Uh, there's also this German nationalist newsletter in the 80s called Siege. Being siege-pilled is believing that you need to, uh, yes, yeah, siege something. Political violence is the only answer, I guess. It's just really boring, simple, like, political rhetoric, codified and, and gate-kept as some weird, weird ideology. But yeah, it's just a belief in, like, political violence, but you're far right. It's like, that's it. Um, people follow this one. I, I feel like it's 16-year-olds. I feel like it's not actual, like, significant people. It's, it's always just kids LARPing on the internet, trying to pretend like they know more than they actually do for some, uh, for some sort of community, some sort of community sense. D-tier. D-tier for the siege bill, man. D-tier for the fucking siege bill. Okay, the one I don't want to talk about. It's called the rape pill. Now, what in the fuck is the rape pill? Man, my family watches these videos. I don't want to say this out loud. So first things first, this isn't real. This is another thing from the ADL that they just wrote about. Like, I don't know. Okay, the Anti-Defamation League, right? I can imagine the, the Anti-Defamation League sending fucking sleeper cells into 4chan and they're trying to find out like, oh, what's the next big threat, okay? And then some, you know, anonymous person in actuality just a 15 year old some kid said this and they're like oh that's a thing but it's not a thing okay the rape pill it's a belief that all sexuality is predatory male sexuality male sexual nature is predatory uh and and and, and they prove this with the belief that sleeping with somebody involves some sort of coercion it's not just like a like a 50-50 even deal contract. You gotta show your partner why you're worth sleeping with. And to people who believe in this, and, accord and according to this, that's, uh, that's rape because you're convincing them to sleep with you. Look, ADL wrote about it. I found a PDF of a scholarly article that cited the ADL article, but then the ADL article doesn't cite- There isn't even an author on the ADL article. It's just like you go to ADL and you look up rape pill and then a, des a description of rape pill comes up. There's no author, there's no citation, there's nothing. It's as validatable as a form post. And then to cite that just because it's the ADL, this isn't real. This isn't a real thing. No one believes that. I mean, okay, people believe this actually, I guess. Um, I definitely know, like, the whole idea of, like, male sexuality being predatory is a belief that people have. No one has ever called it the rape pill, and we're not gonna- we're gonna take this, and we're gonna put this down here with the blue pill. In F tier, because it's a stupid fucking idea. Go to this secret pill. Hello. Secret pill that no one saw coming. It was a fucking invisible, an invisible PNG secret pill. Okay, what is the secret pill? Of all the ones I wanted to be fake, after looking at all the bunk ass articles of just people talking and like Quora answers, but there's no actual evidence of this existing, no one actually believes in this. This is one of the ones that I was for sure thought would be fake. And it's not fake, it's real. People believe in this. I, there's evidence of people talking about it on the internet, unironically, and that is the dog pill. What is the dog pill? It's the belief, the genuine belief. They have little fucking stats, they have posts, they have, they have analytical breakdowns of why this is the truth and why this is real. It is the belief from incels that women would rather sleep with dogs then sleep with them. Like, they write about it as if they're onto some groundbreaking mathematical formula. It's like they're discovering quantum theory. They're just like, wait, but dogs have giant cocks. Dogs are more masculine than human men? Women really appreciate the dominating features of a dog. I don't want to talk about this anymore. But you know what the worst part is, is I can't put it F tier because there's people that actually believe in it. I don't want to put this anywhere. Fuck. Secret pill goes to B2. The last pill, perhaps the most positive of all the pills. The most genuine, the most beautiful of all the pills. And that's the white pill. Taking the white pill is feeling hopeful about your ideology in the face of adversity. This sounds so pleasant. There's a, there's a Nick Fuentes tweet where he talks about being white pilled, so that kind of, uh... Nietzsche talks about active and passive nihilism. Passive nihilism is just basically, you know, bending over and taking it. And active nihilism is like we were talking about with the uh, political black pill, about using nihilism as a, as, a, as a stepping stone into forging your own meaning. And I think white pill is like the process of forging your own meaning. Mind you, it always goes back to the right wing. It never goes back. There's no one who is like, there's no socialist out there who thinks they're like white pilled. This is always about right wing people. I said this was a happy pill, but this is actually a stupid pill. Uh, pa Active nihilism is cool. I like active nihilism. I'm gonna just call this the active nihilist pill. I'd say I'm like an active nihilist if I had to pin myself. The only consequential pill is the is the uh, incel black pill. The rest of these are just lore. The incel black pill is like as consequential as like ISIS is, I'd say. It's like a death cult terrorist philosophy. White pill is D tier. Lots of D tier. You know, I got a nice spectrum here. Pretty happy with my uh, my range. 
as I was saying, the only consequential pill is the insult black pill. And with the rest of these, it's hard to distinguish parody on the internet. Everything's a boogeyman. Like there's like, like the alt-right doesn't really exist and fucking Antifa doesn't exist. None of these things actually exist. The whole thing is populated by 15 year olds and 19 year olds. Like Nick Fuentes is younger than me and his fan base is younger than him. His fan base is like 20. The whole groiper thing. Every once in a while you get a consequential individual who is going to commit some mass casualty act. It's never organized. There's no organization behind it. It's just someone choosing to do something because they're fucked. Behind ideas like this, behind all the pills, we find the, uh, the accelerationists who like the... New Zealand mosque shooter. They just, they want to cause psychic chaos. Those are also the kind of people that put bad ideas out there for the sake of putting bad ideas out there, knowing that people like fucking Nick Fuentes' is, uh, fan base and 15 year olds are going to fall for it. They're going to fall for it. They're going to believe in it. And next thing you know, you have some 16 year old with the mental illness who genuinely believes in eco fascism, even though from the very beginning, the whole thing was made up. And you cannot tell what's made up and what's not made up. Basically, take the clear pill, uh, look at everything with neutrality, think for yourself, your internal monologue is an illusion, there's no such thing as truth, um, don't think about anything ever again. Thank you for watching, God bless, I'm C Salt Moses, I'll see you next time with a fucking better video.